This is Wade again, in our last episode. Hantal managed to get away from a rival cruise starship with the engine part that was needed to repair the irritated badger and a very strange looking pet. Flossie and Rain continued their investigation into the stolen cargo and ended up inadvertently getting into a bar fight where Flossie took a chair to the face and also a door to the face and she complained about it a lot. Dr. Ezekiel got an order from his high command that he may or may not comply with that remains to be seen. Join us to see what else happens with this crew and enjoy the podcast. Welcome to episode seven of the Chaotic Goodness Podcast, where the science fiction is more fiction than science. Did you just break in here, Super Mario Brothers, there for a minute? No, that's how it goes through. So, so Ren, oh yeah, you hear all this on your communicator, right? As uh, Hental opened up a channel to you to ask you about your status on what's going on, and then everybody just started humming and singing along. I think so yeah, anyways, despite the song Menomena, an surprised. Earth classic, we would like to know how how's everything going? Have you found the hand wavium? Um, no, we we have not. That is so not helpful. Um Flossie created a bit of a kerfluffle. And that is not surprising. <laughs> In the saloon. So we may need to wait for that to die down or to die it down. And Flossie, if you remember, you did get an image before uh, the I fight did indeed. Broke out. I have a code. So Flossie just says, I have a code. <laughs> to what? It's a com code. Interesting. I got it from a guy's head. So, okay. So I found this other guard from the same company that owns that warehouse that I tried to get the the uh, visual from the other guard that didn't go well. Right. Yeah. So I got this guy. I kind of gave him an owie, but yep. yeah, <laughs> it okay. happens sometimes, but I got a com code from him Sweet. having to do with the warehouse. So I figure, you know, maybe we can, why don't we give that to Wade and see what magic he can work? I think that's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Yep. Stop burning down bars. I didn't burn it down. Oh, it's going to start. If there's a fight, there's going to be a fire. Well, but I'm not in there anymore, so it's not my fault. Chain of causality. You get the uh, the communication. Are you going to go back to the ship and use the comm code, or what are you doing? Um, I don't know if I want to do that on the ship, but I would give it to Wade, because I think that he could probably mask it somehow. It's usage. More than uh, our comm system is more than capable of uh, uh, encoding uh, the, the transmission, so it, so they can't trace it. Okay, can, good. can we track Go with transmissions that. that are on that frequency? Who are you asking, Wade? I assume we're all in like group chat at this rate. Mm -hmm. Like, if I mean, worst case, we just go into orbit and try to triangulate. Our we have two shuttles. Our comms do have that capability, hands all. That is super awesome. We should do that. We should make that a plan. Just the sooner we get away from Yankoff Armor Schmidt's ship, the better. Agreed. Like, it's really important. So are you ladies getting on the ship? Yes. Okay. So you two get up to the uh, to the irritated badger, uh, push the button to get let on. Uh, you, you glance over at the anteater... And the, the ship's closed and everything, but you can look over in the cockpit and you see a couple of crew members just yelling at each other. You're not sure what's going on there. What did you do? Can I go open the door since it's on lockdown like they rang the doorbell? You, you have to unlock the door since the ship's on lockdown. Sweet. I'm going to go to the door carrying Valhalla and I'm going to open it and be like, look what I found. We should leave. A fuzzy little thing is looking at you with big puppy dog eyes. <laughs> I, I don't know, but it has six legs. Oh, it's so cute. 
it can really I wanted me to try to find your scotch, guys. But I was trying to get him back. So, but he's so cute, isn't he? Get on the ship. We got to run. Okay, yes. No, can first, I hold guys. it? I want to hold it, please. Can I hold it? Guys, we have to find the missing cargo. Yeah, but we need to get off of the spaceport because the thing that's letting us leave, I stole from our neighbor. <laughs> I'm aware. I was here when you brought it back. We have shuttlecraft. We can come back. From the back of the ship, you hear Gideon go, you stole this part? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I didn't steal it. I was simply redistributing somebody else's property accordingly. We needed it. They didn't. They're not moving. We intend to. Problem solved. Gideon comes running up uh, to the everybody when you, you guys you know, enter in through the cargo bay everyone who's collected there and all, and Gideon's like, okay, so we're good to go. The part's placed in and everything. We should get out of here before they find out what happened to their missing part. Because they can't, they can't take off without it. Which is great. Yeah. We and, can't leave until we track down the missing cart. I have... We could come we, back. We can stay in orbit. I, I'm aware. I'm just... We're not leaving you the You were planet. doing an awesome job at stating the obvious. Okay. Let's get to orbit. You easily you go in, you start up the systems, and you take off and just can I hang wave? In orbit. Can I wave and take off? I'm like I want to turn slightly to the right. You know what? You know what? We'll just say that you you hang out the co- you you wave at him out of the cockpit, and you see, as Yankov comes walking out the ship, and he's like looking at the engines, he sees you waving, and then all of a sudden it just clicks in his head. And you see him pointing at you, and it looks like he's yelling like really horrible things at you and making several rude gestures. And he's screaming at the crew, and he's like throwing something, and he goes to he goes to kick something, but his boot flies off, and he's he's very unhappy. <laughs> As you break orbit, and he cannot. So now, what do you do? We should plug into that com system with the code and see where everyone's at, so we can try to find stolen stuff. Yeah. So. All around you from the ship, you hear the voice of Wade going, Fossey, if you wouldn't mind inputting the code in the comm station. Oh, sure. Hang on just a second. Okay, there you go. Okay, so you punch the code in, and you hit the transmit button. And Fossey, the- would you like to come to medical and maybe get your face patched up? Oh, yes. yes because Flossie took a chair to the face and then took door. a saloon door to said face. Mm-hmm. But at least only the chair broke the skin. You're bleeding you... on our nice, clean spaceship. <sighs> oh, my God. You think our spaceship's nice? She probably has I a got concussion. hurt, okay? I think it's clean. That might be the bigger delusion. Can you do nice, like, little stitches? Please. <laughs> <laughs> As the dice tumble in his hand. <laughs> Flossie, Flossie asks the doctor if she can patch up his face using small things. The doctor escorts Flossie over to the med bay on Honey Badger 2. <laughs> Honey Badger 2, is it, right? Oh, yeah. I think Honey Badger 1. Honey Badger 1. Well, that's right. Honey has this the, is so yeah. unfair. Honey Badger 1. And so the, the doctor uh, takes out his tools and starts to get to work on Flossie's face. And this is where we learn he was previously a field medic. And what did you roll? <laughs> The good news is I got an eight. Oh, that's good. What's the bad news? I only got an eight. <laughs> so look, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. You can, the, you I can, can choose, choose one, one thing. Of these. Okay, but that's the limit of what he can do. So he can either treat a single minor, major, or severe injury, treat a debility which you don't have, stabilize a debility, or perform a procedure. So he can either fix the minor wound or the major wound that you took. I'm gonna go with major. Minor would be the the door to the face, yes, right? Because my nose is bruised. Would right? be the bruising, but he could but take care of the chair broke the skin. He could take care of the laceration. That, yes, right. I mean, that's. Do you want a scar shaped like a lightning bolt? No, but perhaps I could think of something otherwise interesting. Mostly straight shapes. I haven't <gasps> done stitches in a while. Oh. What about like a cute heart or something? We're gonna have to damage you more first. <laughs> oh, there's you, you can always brand it closed. I mean, yeah. cauterize. That's, not on my face. Is, is everybody in the med room watching this, or is it just the doctor? That would not talking? surprise me one bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm blind. <laughs> hey, you want to watch Doctor Zeke fuck up? Yes, <laughs> yes I do. But you're busy <laughs> flying the ship, Hental. Wait, we have security cameras on the ship. Live feed. 
kind of like the first person to pass out at a party and right? everybody's yeah, <laughs> exactly. pretty much. How's the bullet in your leg doing, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> the fest drink has stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll just fix up the nice straight little stitches, very minimal scarring, but I won't be able to br- fix up the bruise on your nose. But good. Well, I mean, you you do get you know uh, numbing medication, a topical solution to put That's on your good. face, so you're not in a lot of pain, but you good. do still have a minor injury. Okay. And you are now the irritated badger is now hanging in orbit, geosynchronous orbit around the planet Capra. And you uh, transmit towards the comm code. It looks like Wade is just doing it himself. And uh, Wade is patching through the uh, communications through the entire ship because nobody is in the comm room right now. And you get a message. uh, You know, somebody picks up on the comm code. Hello? Hey. Who is this? You know. If I knew, I wouldn't be asking who this is. Listen, you want me to go down and pick up the stuff or not? This Greg? Well, no shit. Who else do you think it is? Give me an influence roll. Six. (laughs) That's success at a cost, isn't it? No. Uh, So they hang up. God damn it. Uh... Although, if somebody could give me uh, 2d6, I will roll. We will roll for a chance to see if no, we give were. Me the bombs. No, I want to roll high. <laughs> <laughs> no, we want you to roll high. We'll roll. Yes, we'll roll to see if Gideon can triangulate the location of this place. I, mm, so that's seven, eight, nine. So I succeed at a cost. So. Gideon is able to triangulate the location that the the transmission went to. However, uh, it's coming from a location that will make things very difficult for us. So what what is difficult about getting to this location? Uh, Christy? It's underwater. That is oh, so counterproductive. Okay. <laughs> so it's Wait, underwater. Wait, keep water out? I, mean, uh, I don't know. I didn't take Passive shield theory in medical school. Well, it wouldn't. It would be more about whatever propulsion. Does somebody want to ask the mechanical expert about that? No. no. Yeah, that's of seems- course, of course <laughs> not. Logical. That would make way too much sense. And we're space morons. Yeah. Duh. We know. Haven't you been listening? Mm-hmm. Welcome to episode seven. Have you been paying attention? <laughs> you ought to. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to hear James channel his inner Foxworthy. <laughs> Here's your sign. I... Anyway. Okay, so the location is underwater, which makes things difficult because you're in a spaceship and not a submarine. Okay, great. Yes. That would make it difficult. So you have a... It's not so much an exact location; it's a general area, but it is definitely an on, ocean. <laughs> is definitely off the coast of an ocean. It's definitely underwater. So, what do you all do? Hey, kids! Honey Badger Two has sensors. I bet we could do a low-level fly over the ocean and use its sensors to locate where we need to go. It's also that sounds shielded. really smart and kind of easy. Which is why we should not do that and pick the worst possible course of action. That's no, what we're I was not thinking. Playing Shadow Run anymore. <laughs> so I say, me and Flossie go for a nosedive out the cargo bay into the water with scuba gear. Woo-hoo! We have I'm scuba so gear. I'm so down with we can that. Buy some, maybe where? possibly. I have no idea. Quit crushing my dreams. Me and Flossie got to get this done. Yes. See, we're gonna do it. We're doing it. There might be like a. Scuba shop moon nearby. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Planet Scuba for all your scuba needs. (laughs) Gideon is listening into the idiots. Fun fact: the moon's a barren wasteland. (laughs) The the plan about scanning the area first 
might be better, and then maybe we can go scuba-ing in. <laughs> scuba recon. Scuba is fun. Yeah, that's great, but we still have no idea where we're going. Hey, can Honey Badger 2 fly underwater, even though it has shields? Like, would the shields keep the water out of the engines long enough for us to go down? And Number one, it's a shuttle, not a submarine. Number two, shields. Those shields are ray shields, not liquid shields. That is... That is most unfortunate. You know, you and your physics and your paying attention to science. It keeps us alive in space. You are the pilot of a spaceship and you're scoffing at physics? Listen, I raise things by feel, not by science, okay? Noted. Done pretty good so far, just saying. I was Haven't dusted any feel. engines, just saying. <laughs> Haven't knocked out anyone's no. teeth. You're not supposed to feel it with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> now we all know what happens when you That's pilot one-handed. That's not what that means. <laughs> No, it's like driving by by. It's like by telling which which lane you're in by by, by bumping to the, the side. No, yeah, the turtle driving over the turtles. We had uh, our brief discussion here. So what what is the crew doing? How are we proceeding? I guess we'll go to the honey badger two and fly over low level with sensors. <sighs> Fine. You know how disappointed the pilot sounds. What's that? At, uh, at piloting? Yeah. Adulting Not sucks. Safety first. Okay, so who is going to go into the shuttle? So Hental obviously is the pilot. Is anyone else going? Me, 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 me. I'm going to go. You no, know, this this one doesn't have a gun in it, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. If she carries a gun into it, it will. Um, True. I think we should all go. We really probably should. Wait, Splitting the party doesn't sound like a good idea. No. Although we may Isn't have to leave Gideon. Isn't that rule number one? We, we, probably, <laughs> we should Isn't probably... Isn't that our standard go-to in this, too? <laughs> yeah. We, we should never probably leave that. Gideon <laughs> Let's here. see what happens when we follow the rules and don't split the party. Terrible things. <laughs> no good could come of this. But at least we'll die together. Well, at well, least no, no. We... Gideon can escape with without us, so that's nice because we should leave him. No, up just here Wade. Keep... No, Gideon. Well, we, no, we're gonna take we Gideon's. Can't... When's the last time Gideon actually stepped foot on a planet surface? Gideon? Today, it's no. going to happen. Okay, it's going to happen today. Right, because Wade can, you know, Wade can do what his about thing. The ship? And Gideon says, "How about I just stay behind and feed Valhalla?" Because I don't know when the last time he it. Well, he yeah, he right licked the blood off of uh, Hental's hand. True story, bro. I hope that's not what it eats. Me I don't too. know, but he looked sad when he did it. Like he he felt for me. Yeah. Anyway, I'm staying with the ship. You and uh, Hental and Flossie are going to the shuttle, right? And why don't we do that? And everyone, then... including you. Come on, let's go. It'll be fun. It'll be like a field trip. Come on. Time's a wasting. You don't get on the cruiser. You can't just sit here on the ship all day, every day. Well, I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. Come on. Fine. Whatever. I don't Come care. on, Zeke. All right. Woo-hoo. We're leaving Wade, the illegal AI, uh-huh. in charge of sh- keeping the ship in orbit, which is a crime. This is a terrible idea. Split and it worked party. before. Don't give it. Split don't give party. in to peer pressure. <laughs> split the party. <laughs> Think of Bill Murray at the end of Ghostbusters. <laughs> but instead of cross, split the party. <laughs> Split I thought you said that would make the party. universe explode. Do whatever. I'll be waiting in the shuttle. You guys Don't figure it cross out. The party. So, <laughs> okay, so Hental flies, Flossie is hanging out. Flossie and Gideon will man the sensors. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. So And then we've got combat backup and your cleric, so we're good. The whole crew is going. The, everyone's going. Everyone's okay. on the fucking shuttle. Everyone's on the this shuttle. This is such a bad idea. No, good. It's a great idea. This is it's a horrible great. idea. It's a field trip. No. Relax. The shuttle's not fun. even agile. Yeah. That's the best But part. when you're flying, Let's it'll be fine. Things. It, it looks like beyond everyone's better judgment, everyone is going on the shuttle, so you, Yay. All, you all squeeze I hate in. This plan so When's hard. the last time we saw the space police? I, I mean, regular, normal kind of uh, space lane stops, inspections. I mean, it's not like it's not like we've done anything illegal, really. So, except for stealing engine parts. Well, now we have. And did we disable Yankoff Armor Schmidt's communications or weapon systems? I think Hetzel we neglected to uh, mention that he was disabling their communication devices. 
because I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably why. So here's hoping that Yankoff did not call the police on us. Listen, he's as much a criminal as we are. Well, the only way to find out what happens is to play the game, so you all squeeze into the shuttle. Okay, here we go. Uh, hence all detaches. I'm only coming along because none of you will trust me to pilot the irritated badger on my own. That's I correct, sir. You don't have to. Wade can do it for you. So you detach from the irritated badger and you make your way back down to the planet, uh, swooping over the ocean area. And uh, let me see, James, give me a roll. You're going to roll uh, Gideon's uh, interface. I'm going to roll Gideon's interface? Yes, you are. Do I have with to- the sensors. Just 2d6 and add two. Nine? Nine. We succeed at a cost. So uh, the sensors managed to, to get a good view of the the base. Uh, the cost is that the, well, not base, but the area that was underwater, whatever it is, the location is now alerted to our presence. And we know that. So Gideon's, so Gideon is actually able to bring up a, a, a holographic map on the little display here and goes, oh, that's great. And now there looks like they're transmitting on an alert frequency. They know we're here. Can, can you jam that by any means or can Wade jam that? Actually, Wade is on the ship, so uh, Gideon will attempt to make another um, uh, interface roll. 12. So, yes, it's jammed. Fucking sweet. So, all right. So now the location. Strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Spaceballs reference in my Uncharted Worlds game? Yes. Cool. (laughs) So the signals are blocked. Uh, Gideon says, as long as we are in the area, I can keep them blocked indefinitely. They won't be able to get any communications out or receive any, but we need to be nearby. So if we're going to go down in there, you know, we kind of need to figure out how we're going to do it. Well, I'm going to stay on the uh, boat to make sure that we can make a quick getaway. What so we need to come up with a plan, guys. How are we getting down there? Scuba. Do we don't we don't have, have scuba, scuba here? Gear. Hey, <laughs> in your sensor sweeps, did you notice any form of surface entry point maybe that they might have? Because if it's underwater, it probably needs to cycle out air, and water doesn't usually have a lot of air under it. Or how deep is it? Too? Also a good question. So it's pretty deep down in there. If you're going to be looking for uh, a surface-based entrance, uh, hence all, since you came up with that, I want you to give me an assessment check. This is a terrible plan. Give me assessment plus uh, interface. That is a terrible plan. Eight. You succeeded a cost. So you. So let's see. Assessment on an eight. Reveal interesting information. about the subject. So we'll say, yes, there is a surface based entrance to this underwater area. <laughs> However, something about this entrance, I mean, obviously, oh, you know, I mean, if it doesn't want to be seen, there's something hazardous about this entrance. So, Steve, what is a hazard that the crew has to brave to get through this entrance? My brain is trying to eject itself out of my ears. As I say, liquid hot magma. So the base entrance is surrounded by liquid hot magma. That makes sense. The entrance to this underwater base is in a volcano, I assume, or a caldera. (laughs) Or Minecraft. It's the nether. Well, guys, you guys are on your own. Figure out how to get on in there. (laughs) This is volcano base. (laughs) Well, the magma is just going to eat its way into the base and will destroy the stuff for us. So we really don't have anything to worry about. The volcano has done our job. We could go home peacefully. Can we trigger an eruption? Ooh, I like it. Burn it with fire. Wait, does the submarine have sharks with lasers on its head around it? Lasers. Do we have a virgin to sacrifice? (laughs) On this ship? (laughs) No. Sorry, I fail. Gideon sinks lower in his... (laughs) (laughs) 
I look Perfect. at a medical on, school Gideon. you went to. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Wait, wait, wait. I've got We're an not... idea. What? 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 What if? What if? <laughs> what if? Explosives. Because that thing looks like it cycles the air, right? That's what that thing does? Yeah? Yeah, it's yeah. the air cycle. So what if we shot it so that the magma would go into the air cycle, forcing the submarine base thing to have to come up for air, and then we pounce it's like actually, flying ninjas. I like That's it. That's a really good plan. Who came up with it for you? I was, I was reading comic books. <laughs> <laughs> you took my comic books too? No, these ones are mine. I bought these legit. Okay. So this underwater area is actually a submarine. Yes. And there's, for some reason, there is an air intake. Well, I mean, if you want to stay underwater indefinitely, you need some kind of air exchange. Right. So by sabotaging it, you're going to force, force them, them to, to come surface. up. Oh, okay. I learned this from the Houston Powers comic books, where he battled Dr. Not-So-Nice. <laughs> Okay. The horrified looks Christy <laughs> is giving James right now, dear listener, is really awesome. <laughs> Should have gone with Houston Electric. <laughs> <laughs> but that might have gotten sued if that's the actual name of Houston's <laughs> power management authority. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the fact that we can't go underwater is science based. <laughs> <laughs> and yet there's. Can I ask a question? Actually, now that I'm thinking. Magma. Where, yes, where does the magma come from? The volcano? Where's the volcano? <laughs> on top of the submarine? <laughs> It's on an island in the ocean near where the submarine's at, obviously. Wait. So the submarine has to dock. To cycle all of its air. I have a whiteboard. Do you need to draw this out? <laughs> I can totally draw it out. I've got this. I can draw it out right here on the scratch paper. Hey, on. Continue. This might be a minute. <laughs> so there's a volcanic island somewhere in this ocean that the submarine is parked nearby, and their air exchange hose is blocked by magma. <laughs> it's near the magma, I guess, to get... Well, no, we we said that it was some kind of entrance into it, so yeah. that the air exchange would have to be enormous. Right. So it's probably it's probably so close to it that if a person were trying to climb into it, they would suffer serious harm. Unlike what it's made out of. Right. Right. So apparently it's made out of some kind of magma-resistant material. Which is, uh, luckily for us, not resistant to gunfire. Well, this is a space opera, so sure, why not? But we've already broken enough crimes, so let's, let's order the AI to fire the weapons on the, on the base, too. Gideon, as the voice of reason and NPC, apparently, says that would attract a lot of unwanted attention to us. Unless he can telepresence into Honey Badger 1 and fly it down here with its just regular ship cannons. Oh, did the doctor tell us that we were to destroy, or did he just say we needed to retrieve? We need retrieve. Only I've only yes. mentioned the retrieve part. I forgot about that. So we need to retrieve it, not destroy it. I, I haven't figured out how to broach the subject of destruct of destroying cargo with this crew yet. I'll, I'll I'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Job one is locate the cargo. I am astounded. <laughs> yeah, liquid hot magma, shoot, submarine, island base. So everything's there. Show, show it to Chad. James has a nice little diagram here that we will, I guess we'll post up in the show notes. I see. So... So the submarine is underwater, and their air shaft is tunneled through the volcano, and the top, the top is coming out on the side where there's a bunch of magma. What, what? That is what we are dealing with here. So are we, so one plan is to fire missiles at it and yeah. cause them to surface. 
there is no problem that cannot be solved by the practical application of high explosives. Right, right. Yes. Fist bump. Woo-hoo. But we don't want to destroy the merchandise. We want to make sure that... Actually, those were our direct orders. No, I haven't told you that. You don't know yet. that. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm psychic. You haven't... <laughs> because it's worth money. Remember, He's good. I like money. Because we have to... We have to. I have to replace my scotch. We have to turn this cargo in if we're going to get paid by the planetor- planetary authority. But, and I haven't told you this yet, we have to destroy it to get not destroyed by Mega Tri Pharmaceuticals. We have to make Mega Tri think, think we destroyed, destroyed it. it. Oh, okay. I like doing that better. Good. Let's Which go. Which is with why that. I haven't mentioned destroying. We'll just steal it for ourselves. Did you say that in character? Not yet, no. Okay, so all of this is pointless babble. Okay. So, we have the setup on how the uh, the submarine that probably has the cargo on it, you don't know, but it's the only lead that you have. You have the, the air exchange set up. How are you guys approaching this? Can we con- contact them and say, My name is Yankov Armerschmidt. Release cargo or else. We don't know that he's actually involved. I don't care if he's involved. I want to blame him. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Anyone else for or against this idea? Pour me two shots of something strong. <laughs> sure well, thing. They already know we're coming, and chances are they've scanned this vessel. What? Like other people have sensors too? Yeah. Bullshit. Amazing. Bullshit. Amazingly enough. We need to find stupider people. <laughs> <laughs> I know where I can find you a ship full of stupid people. So does that make us... No, never Selfie mind. time! <laughs> Group photo. Selfie! Oh, that's us. Good. You were smart enough to figure that out on your own. So is the... Is the oh, 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 yes. Oh. Rin, Rin, Rin has a headache with pictures. Oh. <laughs> what say you? Um, um, you know the things that you put on to go out in space? Space suits. Yes. They're shielded, and lava is really hot. So. They're radiation shielded. Well, that but, might help. But temperature. Right. Because it's really cold in space. She's got a point. I am Insulated. on cold meds, so thinking's hard. They could probably. <laughs> so the. The evac suits or the vac suits uh, could probably handle the intense heat, but not submersion in magma. No, but the, the pipe, vent the, is the vent sitting in is, the middle of the. So you have to. It's be, just hot. You know, I can I can pilot down Honey Badger One. And just hover over. It's the agile. Top. Yeah, we can like you can rep- Can you repel? Do so you know how to so tie going back to the irritated badger? I could tie a rope. Right. Can you climb down that rope that you tie? Yes. Can you, can you, I can hold can on you tie to a the Swiss rope. saddle? I, I have no idea what you're talking We're about. Not riding sure. a missile down into the air. All right, that's plan B. If this plan doesn't work out, that's exactly. Let's let's number that higher than B. Let's call that plan G. But if if it is human size hole, I can go down into it. It's bigger I, than human sized. See, this well, is then. a great plan. I like a lot of this plan. Do we have a wench on the honey badger? Does that come standard on these things? Don't call me a wench. You mean, <laughs> you mean well, winch, wench? That right? was yes. so rude. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tow cables. Do we have tow cables? Yeah. Remember, we used them to tie the honey badger onto the That's onto right, the irritated we did. badger. We totally this, this. this shuttle always dock. has tow cables on it in case the doctor has to dock with the ship. <laughs> I like this plan. We can make this happen. Let's return and get let's 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 swap out ships. Back into orbit. Oh, it <laughs> fast enough. And then we all shuffle across to Honey Badger 1. Do, 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 do. Do, and, do, do. and then we go screaming back into the atmosphere. At this point, uh, you, Hental, since you were flying the ship, you get hailed by traffic control. Honey, um, the transponder reads Honey Badger 1. Are you okay? Because 
I'm seeing a lot of traffic coming from your ship to the surface back and forth. Are yeah. you in distress? No, we're cool. There's a nifty volcano over here that we're just checking out, and some of the people on this ship haven't seen it, so we're just doing some sightseeing. Uh, sir, getting close to volcanoes is dangerous. We're not getting close. We're just going near it. Like, there's close, and then there's close-ish. And we're, we're not close -ish. getting close. We're just going near. There are different gradients of close, sir. Uh, sir, you're going to have to give me an influence roll. <laughs> this is going to be terrible now that I... <laughs> different dice. I think I picked different ones. I don't know. What he uses different dice every roll. It still help. does bad. It doesn't help. Eight. All right. You succeed at a cost, so they don't... They don't immediately uh, send the security forces after you. However, uh, your ship and this this uh, conversation is being logged. Well, that makes sense. I would log this, too. It's going to be reviewed later. So you're being scrutinized. Okay. I want to make real nice with the guy on the, on the, on the comm. Like, try to play it off like you forget about okay, it. Okay, so he, he kind of says, well, as, as long as you're staying at a safe distance, and, sir, we need to keep this channel clear. So you have a good day. But I love you. We got so close. Don't leave me, Sean. And, and yeah, the channel closes. <laughs> Obviously, the air, the space traffic control guy is not comfortable with that level of intimacy. Not with a man he just met anyways. Can yeah. I try to hail him back? No. no. <laughs> Moving on, since the ship is agile, I need you to give me a metal roll to get close enough to the air vent to where Rin can operate. And at this point, dice, so hopefully good. this works out. And Rin, you are getting into a spacesuit right now. Suited okay. up. Yes. All right. Ready for action. Hopefully. Are we sending Rin into the volcano base on her own? Sounds like it so far. Just imagining a thump, th 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 <laughs> slide down. <laughs> All hell breaks loose. Ten. Hey, you succeed completely. Thank God you don't ram into anything. <laughs> like the lava. So the Honey Badger 1 just goes in very agilely uh, and hovers perfectly right over the air intake. And you're far enough away where the air exchange doesn't mess with, with anything. And you're able to open, uh, Rin, you, you hit the button to open up the the hatch under underneath the shuttle and you open it up and this blast of hot air just rises up and you're looking down you're seeing surrounded by extremely hot magma inside of a volcano well, i guess it's lava at this point since it's on the floating around and a giant grate with just this massive blast of air coming out of it that's very warm, and it's blowing up on the underside of the ship, and you need to close the hatch soon before everybody else inside gets cooked alive. So do you dive down in there? Yes. Rin jumps down, and the hatch closes shut behind her. And you, uh, Rin, give me a physique roll to make sure you land okay. Uh, 13. You totally just kind of, like, land. You hit the, actually, you know what? You did so well. You fall from the spaceship. You're in a space suit and still manage to make the superhero landing look cool. Well, naturally. So you're down on one knee with a fist in the in the grate, mm -hmm. with your head down, and then you look up, and you look awesome. How am I going to open this grate while I'm standing on it? Is there an edge around the grate? Yes, no, uh, yes, there God. is. You can you can grab <laughs> and pull. You have the leverage to do it. So okay. You just need to give me another physique roll. To you're the only one that can rip this thing open with a uh, thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else describes something cool that she does. What, Rin? Do you want to? How? What is the the really awesome way that you open up this grate? Obviously, she left a handprint in it when she grabbed it. I'd just roll it up like a tin of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No no can opener needed. <laughs> and it's right. wide open. Okay. Should somebody go with her? <laughs> I don't know why I'm going alone. <laughs> because you have a gun in combat training. I have yeah. to stick with the ship. That's that's he, he, he wait, Flossie can go with you, can't she? If Flossie No Flossie Sure I no, can. No Flossie cannot No, wait, Flossie. Why not? I need you in the turret just in case. Okay. Uh, I'm going. Because I was gonna say, like, Flossie, you wouldn't just dive in there as soon as the, the vent is open? No. 
Well, I'm I not would. making that jump. But the, the yeah. hatch is close, so she That's can't fine. dive in. Can she get over that? No. It's, it's, it is, it, Floss, it, okay. Kim, it is your character. You I have a rope. are in charge of what she does. You got, we got all the, the cable. The, yeah. Wait, There's okay. the whole. What do, you what do you think? So I could just. Winch, not to be mispronouncing at things again. Winch. I'm going to shoot stuff. So Flossy goes straight to the turret and powers that sucker up. So uh, it looks like Rin is going to be on her own. You jump down in there. What do you do? If I make that jump, I will land square in the lava. I'm not <laughs> going. <laughs> Don't roll. It's, it's nice to know that one of my players doesn't trust himself with dice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good call. You have we're to. Just, we're going to call this a practice roll. Physique, yeah, yeah. Said, oh, right? A practice roll. Practice, okay. practice roll. Just, just to see what would have happened. Oh, that's an eight. You would have made it at a cost, right? You were probably broken your leg, but you would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just patch myself. Physician, heal thyself. <laughs> just bring an air cast with you. <laughs> It'll melt in the magma. So Rin jumps down. <laughs> And so what we're going to do is we're going to narrate what Rin does, but the rest of the players are going, if there's any complications that come up, you guys are going to be coming up with it. Just to keep everybody involved. And if there's any NPC interaction, you guys <laughs> swarm can take of over. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. So, Snakes on a plane. <laughs> also, remember... On a sub? Snakes on a sub? Remember, Ooh. Rin, you are going into a submarine that is on high alert. Yes. They know you're coming. So I'm trying to be very quiet. So you... I'm not going to you land. <laughs> you land on the grate, you tear it open with your bare hands, and you try to be quiet. Well, I'm sure the volcano makes noise. Yes, it does. So you go... Very noisy. You go down... <laughs> <laughs> You go down into the uh, the air exchange tube vent. You I'm going to try in. not to sound like a marble through a little metal chute. <laughs> Give me a physique roll to make sure that you move uh, dexterously enough to be unheard. Twelve? Yes, you do. You Jesus Christ, to get in. woman. They're on high alert, but they don't hear Can you Can I use coming. your dice next time? <laughs> Just have her roll from yeah. all of us. You like, that's the new you're plan. rolling for everybody now. Designated roller. Can we do that? We can. Uh, I don't think we can. No. Oh, by the way, Gideon is going to try to jam their signal to make sure that they don't detect the Honey Badger 1. He gets a 10, so absolutely succeeds. So you guys are undetected, which is good. <laughs> but the sub is still on high alert. So, Rin, you get in there quietly. You get down through the tube. And when you get far enough to where the heat isn't a problem, you shed the spacesuit. And for some reason, since you rolled high enough, your hair is still fabulous. Thank you for listening to the Chaotic Goodness Podcast. We'd like to give thanks to Another Dead Weirdo for our music, Sulfuric for our artwork, Peace, Love, and Games for our playing area, Tabletop Audio for our music and sound effects, and all the fans and listeners for being awesome, supporting us, and giving us feedback, uh, which is very much needed. A couple of quick announcements before we end. Please submit jump points to us. We are looking for fan ideas on story starters, details of which you can find on our website, chaoticgoodnesspodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. And please be sure that you rate and review our show. That is the only way that other people are going to be exposed to our show. And if you really enjoyed what we did, please be sure that you can Make sure other people have the same pleasure you did. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week.